Well, this morning, um, we're going to leave the book of Mark, and um, I was, I volunteered to preach this Sunday while the pastor was away, and um, I wanted to speak a little bit about our thought life and the ways to be able to control it, to control our thought life, and uh, it's... It's something to hear um, Kelly talk about her dad in the old folks' home and things like that. When I was when I was little, my my mom used to drag me into the old people's homes and um, have me play my trumpet for him or sing to him or whatever it was. But because of our government and because of the authorities over us and everything, that very when I was sick too, I remember throwing up over the over the pot, and my mom would hold my head and rub my head, or if I had a fever, she was there, you know, with a with a washcloth, touching me, and that touch that you know you can give your loved one, and uh, everything is not there anymore for them. And uh, so we, we do need to uphold them in prayer and do whatever we can to, to reach out and touch them. Um, getting back to the topic of our thought life and the ways to control it. I know in our house, many times I walk in and I hear my wife listening to podcasts. And she, she, uh, she listens to, oh, probably hundreds of podcasts, but... Uh, one of them particularly is Dr. Caroline Leaf, and she is a doctor that is a neurologist, and she studies the brain, she studies the mind and everything. For many, many years she's done that, and uh, there are some things, some tips on how to control the brain that I just want to start out with by, by reading these to you, and then from that I'll go on to what the Lord has to say, but just before I do, I, I know that our thoughts control a lot of what we do or don't do. And um, this past week, there was a big rattlesnake over by the fuel cell and uh, that, um, what's his name, Lee found. And we all ran out there and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't mind holding a snake and I picked it up and everything, but no one else wanted to hold it, it even though I had it a good firm tight grip behind the the neck you know and no one else wanted to hold it and i it's probably because in their thinking they're thinking i think it bite me or you know it could do some deadly damage to you or whatever and um you know we ended up eating it and not everybody ate from it (laughs) ah it's a snake you know it's like it, even our thoughts in that area, you know, we, we didn't want to, we didn't want to, some of, some guys didn't eat it, even though one of the guys for break brought it over all, you know, fried up and everything, and I had like three or four pieces, no one else wanted them, so it's like, okay, uh, Jeff had some, um, other people didn't, and uh, it was just really interesting to see how our thoughts control what we do or don't do. So these are three tips to help control our brain. He says, you are not your brain. You control your brain. Think of your brain as something physical. Your brain appears. Think of it as something physical, but think of your mind as something non-physical. You're thinking, feeling, and choosing. Be aware of how you're thinking, how you're feeling, and how you're choosing. The way that you are thinking or feeling, or choosing, is creating your next reality. Example, the next time you lose your cool, or get frustrated, or to give up on something, you change your brain, and you're not a robot. A second way is, you can't control your circumstances. Della, you can't control your circumstances. You live with your family, and they're all involved in what they're involved in. But you can control your reactions. You literally are creating matter in your mind, and the matter that you're creating in your mind does really matter. It matters because the matter you think about 
becomes a reality in your brain and then it results in what you're going to say and then what you're going to do. Example, if I tell my wife I love her and I, I speak kind words to her throughout my course of the week or my lifetime with her, it's going to result in something far different than if I were to be yelling at her all the time or cursing her or never talking to her at all or just being mean to her, slapping her maybe. Or like in the Yanomamis, they would actually brand them with firewood or slap them with a machete. And sometimes they'd curve that machete just a little bit much and they'd end up with a big old slice across their back. And those actions, those, those, those things spoken and, and everything are, are, you know, the result would be totally different. If I did that to my wife, our relationship would be a lot different than what it is today. Number three. Well, before I go into the third one, there's a lot of experiences that... Uh, uh, have you ever heard of the rice experiment where you boil rice and you put one jar of rice in a room where things are spoken to nice and calmly in nice, gentle, sweet words. You put another jar or container where it's just being bland with loud music and hateful words and another jar of rice where it's just in a room where no one talks to it and it's as silent as could be. Within a month, the one rice is just beautiful rice. The one here is just ugly, nasty, terrible looking rice. And this one here is like all moldy and everything. And, and it's because of our words and everything that we talk to them. And, and, and there's a result in how... What we, what we do. And uh, a third tip to help control our brain is, how to con is look at what you're saying. Look at what you're doing. Stand back and observe your thinking, your feeling, your choosing, your actions, and your bod bodily reactions. Control those because you have, you have the ability to control all those things. As soon as you rein those in, you're using your mind to change your brain. Manage your brain and you'll manage your life. Now, in 2 Corinthians 10.5, it says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself, the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. A quote, another quote from Dr. Caroline Leaf says, Capturing your thoughts is self-regulating. It is literally observing your thinking. So literally standing outside of your body and observing your own thinking. Imagine capturing those thoughts. Basically not allowing yourself to just be all over the place, helter-skelter, but stop the thought, capture the thought, then decide, what am I going to do with it? It's a disciplined way of observing how you're going to think and manage your thoughts. Dr. Leaf says that, as, as the many years of study she says, she says that, you, that we, as, a, as a humans, are designed to do this. Our brain is wired to do this. And change our thoughts on the inside, and it will create a different reality on the outside. So, the Word of God tells us to put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind. Put on humbleness of mind. That's Colossians 3.12. Meekness. Not weakness. I didn't say weakness. I said meekness. That's controlled strength. Long-suffering. A man or a, or a woman who controls their thought life is a force to be reconciled with. Proverbs 16.32 
He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So think of that. Someone who's taken a city. David used to take cities. You know, the warrior David from the, from the Old Testament. Uh, better is someone that can control their spirit, their mind, than someone that can take a city. So, if you take captive your, your thoughts, you can control many things. You can control your emotions, like it says in 2 Timothy 1.7. Says, for God hath not given us the spirit, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So that's our emotions. You can take control of your actions, your attitude, your words, and your relationships. Some statistics I looked up from past studies. You know that the average Thoughts that you do, your daily average thoughts range from 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day, each one of us. 80% of those thoughts are negative thoughts. 80% of them are negative thoughts. 95% of those daily thoughts are repetitive thoughts. That's... It's pretty bad, isn't it? Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Here, I'm just going to give you some practical ways to change our thoughts. Pay attention to the patterns of our thoughts. Take our thoughts captive and decide what you're going to do with it. Judge it and replace it with a positive thought or a song or a verse or whatever it might be. Number two, assess who's discipling us. Who's showing us? Who's talking to us? Who or what is being introduced, molding us or shaping us? Who or what? Do I want to be shaped by? Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Word of God teaches us to be transformed. And we are to put... On the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to make no provision for the flesh. And the third way, a practical way of, of changing our thoughts would be to help change our thoughts in the sense of to practice intentional and grateful thinking. Like it says in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be careful for nothing, but just in some ways... No, but in everything, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And again, another verse, Philippians 4, 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So the life that God intends for us to live, well, I tell you what, he intends, us, he intends for us to live a life that loves one another and cherishes one another. John 6, 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit 
and they are life. So, again, God's word, they are life. The words that he speaks to us, they are life. Galatians 5.16 This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And 17, it talks about the flesh warring against the spirit, and the two are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Again, where, uh, 1 Peter 1 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. What's that mean? Be sober and hope to the end for grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wherefore, gird up your minds. Gird up your loins means to pick them up. Gird up your mind means to pick them up, to put them, make them captive. Don't let them drag through the sewer. Being of one mind as a body of believers is mentioned multiple times in the Word of God. Like in 1 Peter 3, 8, it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind having compassion one of another, love as brethren, pitiful, be courteous. And you know what? That's what God's life, God's intends our life to be, is to, to have compassion one for another and to love one another. I, re, I, I have a, in my life, I'll have to be honest, when um, there was a time when I was in Florida that uh, Mel Wymo spoke after his wife went to be with the Lord. And Mel Wymo is one of the, the I'd say, like the founders, uh, the founding fathers of eth uh, patriarchs of Ethnos 360 Aviation of New Transmission. And when, he, when his wife died... You know, there he got up and spoke. And this is one of the things he said. He says, you know, I always wish to God that I would have been more sincere to my wife in thought. More pure to my wife in thought. And that really has stuck with me for a long time. It's been a long time since she's passed on. And I've had lots of co-workers fallen co-workers that have worked right beside me and because of their thinking they have resulted in acting out doing things that has disqualified them from the ministry disqualified them from being from doing a job that um you know you, you just love doing from flying from from being being out on on the field and uh, it is, you know, thoughts in my mind, uh, I'll have to confess that I thought that it was a place to let sin roam wide and not get caught. We, could, we can keep our, 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 our thoughts in, in here, and no one else knows what we're thinking. And we can just let them run roam, roam wild we can think all kinds of things, all kinds of sinful things, but guess what? We can't. I thought I was free to act perfect and think whatever. You know, hypocrisy isn't always doing the opposite thing what you say. It's thinking as well. I've entertained thoughts that I've kept secret, like guests in my living room, Believing that it is me and them, and that together we can keep the secrets and nobody else will ever find out. You know, I mess up all the time, and I fail over and over again. I don't have the willpower to match the sin in my skin. <laughs> if we were, if if we were tired of trying to control our brain and instead of our brain controlling us, if, 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 if any of us has experienced being tired of that, well then, how are we going to change? How are we going to change what we do, what we think about? 
In 2 Corinthians 5.10, it says, and, I mean, 2 Corinthians 10.5, I have dyslexia. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and then bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You know, how can I do this? It's impossible, the, all the impossible thoughts that just keep coming back, those 95% of negative thoughts that just keep on coming every day. 2 Corinthians 6, 7. By the word of truth, by the power of God, and by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Romans 8, 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that saved us. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. In Philippians 1, 6, I'm sorry, Kathleen, there's a lot of verses here. Philippians 1, 6, Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In Jude one twenty four, it says, Now unto him who is able to guard you from stumbling and to set you before the presence of his glory without blemish in exceeding joy. Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Ephesians 4.23 And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know, when we were saved, when I say saved, I mean believing in what Christ's finished work on the cross accomplished on our behalf and in giving us eternal life, delivering us from the power of darkness. It's, it's, uh, it's called a good fight for a reason. Uh, then we get saved, and then that renewing of our mind, like it says in Ephesians, to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that, that renewing starts at that very moment of salvation. And, you know, and don't let anything take that from you. Uh, what God started in you will continue until the end. And so I want to just thank God for his word that by his spirit, through the word of God, his spirit then changes us and he, then what? He's the one who gets the glory in whatever we end up doing. It's, you know, there's, there's a lot of prosperity gospel out there that can, you know, throw you for a loop. But yet, the power that we have to change your thoughts comes from the Spirit of God working in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. And so we need to keep that focused and keep it upright. And I just pray that if you have problems that the things that I've said today might help you to be able to change your thoughts so that in, in the result, the resulting things will be a change of what you end up doing. And may we love one another and continue to love one another and, and be in his word. Thank you.